Hey guys, Zot here. With phase 1 being well underway and phase 2 bringing the much awaited honor system, PvP is going to be taking the forefront for most people. And with the abundance of PvE pre-raid bis lists out there, there just isn't any information for PvP pre-raid bis gear. So welcome to exactly that. We cover stat priority and then what pieces of gear you should be looking to obtain along with where you get them. In today's episode we're going to be taking a look at Priest, but more specifically Healing Priests, so those talented into either the Holy or Disciplined Talent Tree. Priest stats for PvP are a lot different to what they aim for in PvE, and looks like this. Intellect and Stamina are going to be your two most favourable stats. Intellect provides what you need most, and that's a large mana pool, with one intellect providing 15 mana, as well as a small amount of spell critical strike. This enables you to heal for longer, and do what priests are best at, and that's dispelling magic effects from either your teammates or your enemies. Stamina obviously provides you with a higher health pool, at the rate of 1 stamina equating to 10 health. Higher health pools means less chance of getting one shot or dying inside of stuns. Having a low amount of hit points in PvP just doesn't cut it, and you'll find yourself dying extremely quickly when focused. Next on the stat priority is healing power. Now this does exactly what the name says, just provides you with an increase to your healing effects. And as in PvP your role is to be dispelling and healing, and with healing power usually being in higher quantities, it's a very good stat to aim for next. Spell power provides you with an increase to not only your healing effects, but your damage. As mentioned, Priest's main role is either healing or dispelling magic, so you're not really going to be doing all that much damage, so this stat is kind of wasted. Now, spell hit we've put on this list for one major reason. Whilst you might not think this is good as a healer, Priest in PvP does a lot of offensive dispels, and it's one of your most important jobs in PvP scenarios. Having hit means less chance to have your dispel magic resistant, along with all of your other offensive spells, including your psychic scream. For PvP, the cap is going to be 3%, despite that you'll always have that 1% chance to miss. The reason why this is so low down on this list is simply due to the fact it's incredibly hard pre-raid to pick up gear with hit rating on, without then heavily sacrificing other stats in the process. And last up is going to be MP5 and Spirit. Mana per 5 takes the lead here. Simply put, MP5 happens all the time. Every 5 seconds, you'll gain mana back, regardless to if you're casting or not. Whereas Spirit relies on working around the 5 second rule, something you can't really do in PvP, as you're more than likely going to be chain casting, and then once the fight is over, you can drink, putting both Spirit and MP5 bottom of our stat priority list. Alright, so with all of that in mind, let's take a look at the best in slot gear you can get right now for PvP. Bear in mind this is pre-raid phase 1.5 gear, so includes all dungeons and the newly released Dire Mall. But to remain up to date with this list, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Starting from the top, we have helmets. For this slot, you're going to be wanted to pick up the Dread Misk Mask, providing a huge boost to both stamina and intellect with some spirit as an added bonus. We're also recommending this helmet due to the set bonus, which we're going to be getting from the second piece of our Dread Mist set, which is the gloves, providing you with some very nice stamina and also intellect and spirit once more. Completing this two-piece set will reward you with 200 armor, helping to decrease the damage you take from physical attack. To first get the helmet, you're going to have to venture into the Scholomance dungeon and take down the final boss, Dark Master Gandlin, where as the gloves have a small chance to drop from one of the six mini bosses required to summon Dark Master Gandlin, which is Lore Keeper Polkout. However, they are also bind on equip and have a chance of dropping from the Necromancers inside of their instance also, so can be purchased from the auction house easily. Classic also have some amazing gadgets from engineering, one of them being the Goblin Rocket Helmet. This is also something you'll want to have on you at all times, if you're an engineer that is. The utility and stun provided by this are extremely strong in PvP situations. Moving down a slot, we've got Amulet up next, and for this we're going to be looking to obtain the Star of Mystaria. This neck is so powerful because of the 1% chance to hit, whilst not heavily sacrificing other stats in the process. 
as this neck still contains 9 stamina, 9 intellect and 8 spirit. The Star of Mystaria comes from the final boss in the living side of Strathholm, the Dreadlord Bowsenar. Shoulders are going to be next on the agenda. For these, we're going to be looking to obtain the Necropiles Mantle. Now, we're going to be taking the entirety of the Necropile set. Each piece has a large amount of both stamina and intellect, with the boots and robe containing a minor boost to spell damage and healing. Completing this set also offers you some nice bonuses, which are some increased defense, added intellect and some really nice resistances, along with then completing the set providing you with 23 spell damage and also healing. Coming from the depths of the dungeon Scholomance, this set all has a chance to drop from any of the 6 mini bosses you're required to kill in order to summon the final boss, Dark Master Gandlin. Next up we've got Cloak. For this, the best option is going to be the extremely strong Hide of the Wild. This Cloak has it all, and there is no better option even when including raid gear. 10 intellect, 8 stamina and a ridiculous 42 healing. There just isn't anything that can compare. Hide of the Wild was added in Phase 1.5 and is crafted by tribal level workers, with the pattern dropping inside of Dire Maul. In order to craft this cloak, it's going to set you back a fair bit of gold, but it's something every healer is going to need. The materials required are going to be 30 rugged leather, 12 living essences, 10 essence of water, 8 larval acid and 3 cured rugged hide. Now despite this being so completely best in slot and worth saving for, sometimes you just don't have the funds. And if that's the case, a cheaper alternative is going to be the Cloak of the Cosmos. This cloak is basically just a budget version of Hide of the Wild, having the same stats just in lesser values. Cloak of the Cosmos comes from Dire Maul West, coming from the penultimate boss Imolfar. And finally, our last piece of armour required is going to be your belt slot. And for this, we recommend the Clutch of Andros. This belt is perfect for PvP and contains high amounts of intellect for your mana pool and also stamina. This belt, when paired with our amulet, is going to bring us to 2% hit rating. Now, the Clutch of Andros is from the first boss inside of the Scholomance dungeon, a gargoyle of the name Curtinos the Herald. Rings are up next, with our first ring on the list being the Blood of the Martyr. This 15 stamina 10 intellect ring has all the stats you need in extremely high quantities for a ring. To get this, it's going to be off to Strathholm. First, you're going to need to clear the live inside, all the way up to the final boss. Just before his final room, you'll find a room with Malor the Zellius inside. Kill him and in the corner, you'll see a small chest. Loot this and inside will be the Medallion of Faith. After that, return to the undead side of Strathholm, near the side entrance, and you'll see a chapel. Inside, an NPC named Aureus will be there. Give the medallion to him and then you'll be required to kill the final boss of the undead side, which is of course Baron Riven Dare. Kill the Baron and you'll get rewarded the ring. The second ring on this list is going to be the newly added Emerald Flame Ring, coming with Phase 1.5. This ring gives a huge 12 intellect, 8 spirit and 7 stamina, and even a bonus to your healing effects. The Emerald Flame Ring is from Dire Maul, and more specifically Dire Maul West, dropping from the final boss of the quarter, Prince Torfeldren, whilst a third ring if you're looking for a bit more throughput, at the cost of some health and mana, is going to be the Forge Ring Seal, obtained from the In Dreams quest chain in Eastern Plaguelands. Moving on, Weapon is up next, and for this you should aim to get the Gift of the Alvin Magi, providing you with 10 Intellect, 5 Stamina and 6 Spirit, so once more very good base stats. Drop in from the final boss in the living side of Strathholm, which is of course going to be Bowsenar. Now, there are better weapons out there, a few examples are Glowing Brightwood Staff or even the Tyndall Haven Staff. But the issue with two-handed staffs is that due to the power of certain offhands, a one-handed weapon paired with an offhand is going to be much more desirable. But if you do want to constantly be swapping weapons, by all means pick up a staff. Now for offhand it's tricky, there is one item that's best in slot stat wise, which is the brightly glowing stone, providing a plus 7 boost to your stamina, but also a whopping 37 healing, making your heals pack that extra punch. But I say it's tricky because ahead of this offhand, 
you're going to also want to have not only Skull of Impending Doom, but also Furbolg Medicine Pouch. The Skull of Doom is perfect for when facing mages, rogues or even hunters, as you can potentially break crowd control, whereas the Furbolg Medicine Pouch is a must when being focused, as it's a 1k heal over time. So if you have Skull or Furbolg off cooldown, use them, if not equip the Globe. To obtain the Globe of Desac, you'll have to hunt for a rare in the lower Blackrock Spire called Spire Stone Lord Magus where a skull is from a short quest chain in Badlands starting with Falder in the Lost, and Furbolg Medicine Pouch is from getting honoured with the Timbermore Hold, then you can purchase the pouch from Gorn One-Eye. Stormrager is from a quest started in Eastern Plaguelands, at Nefanos Blightcaller for Horde and High Lord Bolvar for Dragon for the Alliance. After a short chain you'll be required to kill a Scarlet Elite named Demetria, slay her, return back to your quest giver and you'll be awarded with Storm Rager. Now last on this list is going to be trinkets. Trinkets in Classic are a little different, there are a huge amount of trinkets you should have on you at all times, and there isn't really any best in slot trinkets you should aim for, instead look to collect as many useful utility trinkets as you can. So things like Tidal Charm, all of the engineering trinkets including Netomatic, Frost, Fire, Shadow Reflectors, Nifty Stopwatch, Carrot on a Stick, Barrel of Peasant Caller, Arena Grandmaster, the list just goes on. These trinkets all have very long cooldowns and are all very situational, so make sure you get as many as you can and keep them in your inventory ready to swap around as required. These trinkets are all obtained in various ways, most however are from engineering or quests, but for some more information on must have trinkets, be sure to check out our top 5 utility trinkets you need. But with all of that in mind, there are two trinkets that are going to be good in every situation, and both provide passive stats. That's going to be the Briarwood Reed providing 29 damage and healing, and also the newly added Royal Seal from the Dire Maul Priest class quest, giving you some healing and also some MP5. Alright then guys, that wraps up our pre-raid PvP best in slot for phase 1.5 for healing priests. Now we're going to be keeping these up to date with the phases, so make sure to check back once phase 2 hits for an updated best in slot list. And as always, be sure to please like this video and subscribe to our channel for more up to date content.